So hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today it will be a very short video uh, about the VHF system of Boeing 737. Uh, I will not tell you uh, what is the location of VHF antennas on Boeing 737 uh, as I will do the video with the walk around. Uh, so uh, let's jump to, into the cockpit and uh, I will show you Mm, uh, how all the communications uh, looks like and uh, re um, respective uh, uh, we will be, we'll be little bit discussing about the VHF okay so VHF number one radio number two radio and so on and and mic panel as well so uh, let's jump into the cockpit okay so once we are on the cockpit uh, I put on intentionally uh, keep the airplane on the battery uh, because as you can see uh, if you completely lose your AC power uh, like now uh, the only serviceable panel is VHF number one so on the captain side okay because we need it uh, regarding to few things which are uh, not worried for flight simulator just for your fun and just um, have a look uh, this is the the position when you put your headset okay uh, if you see uh, on the jump seat you have a headset as well and uh, you have headset as well here and uh, your headset uh, are always uh, hanging uh, like in this position okay the, the, this is the habits of the crew uh, to have it somewhere over here and uh, this mic it's using for passenger address systems so when you are making announcement to the passengers okay so uh, this was the basic uh, explanation uh, when we have the jacks connected uh, where is the passenger address system connected and uh, what next uh, the next we are talking about the VHF okay uh, so I will put it uh, on the bus uh, give me just a moment we are requesting the ground power okay now ground power is available and now uh, okay so the Boeing 737 uh, it's basically uh, uh, it's uh, uh, how, I, how can I say it uh, it's uh, it's not big difference between the uh, Airbus and Boeing uh, regarding to the VHF situation uh, on board uh, because uh, as we are talking to the ATC we are proceeding via VHF frequency or Asia frequency uh, the first of all the VHF number one it's always using uh, as an active frequency for transmitting VHF 2 it's uh, mainly uh, using uh, for receiving the messages um, uh, for example uh, from your uh, 80s information uh, ground handling companies uh, should be uh, on VHF number two and and so on and so on and VHF number three uh, it's basically uh, somehow interconnected uh, with uh, data link communication and with ACARS uh, on board okay so uh, for example uh, the logic is uh, always uh, to set the uh, the first active frequency that means delivery ground then you are switching from ground to tower from tower to approach from approach to lower FIR from lower FIR to upper FIR and so on and so on and so on uh, this wage of two we are mainly using uh, for um, first of all uh, if you have ground handling uh, for example so we can put ground handling frequency leave it on uh, on active okay and uh, 
if somebody from ground handling company uh, would like to call us uh, so and we are on board uh, we can uh, uh, very quickly answer to this situation uh, while we are in the f or you can press for example the 80s information put it on active side and once we are in the air we are always using it uh, for emergency broadcast services uh, which is uh, to we are receiving for, uh, or let's say listening on the frequency which is one to one decimal five uh, now you can see some switches below okay so uh, I can for example if I would like to transmit on uh, VHF number one uh, I can press it uh, with VHF uh, number two and uh, as you can see uh, the frequencies are, are perfectly the same and as you can see uh, what I am tuning here it's reflected right over here so if I press it like this one uh, that's okay so uh, uh, but this this too it's 99% uh, uh, mm, of the flight we are not using it okay and so uh, we can go uh, uh, to the most interesting site and uh, this is the mic selector okay the mic selector what does it mean okay I will put it like this one uh, that means that if I press VHF number one I am transmitting on VHF number one active frequency uh, if I press VHF number two I will transmitting on VHF frequency number two uh, if I press uh, HF1, HF2, uh, it's on remote areas, uh, for example, uh, so uh, we can we can receive and uh, and sending the messages via HF frequencies. Flight interphone. Flight interphone is it's very interesting because uh, it connects. To, uh, you have always uh, have to connection. Uh, with your ground personnel for example during the pushback or during the starting the engines so you are connected with ground personnel via flight interphone service interphone we are using for cabin crew communication so that means that um, if we have a call out uh, uh, like like here now okay from flight attendant uh, so that means that uh, we push the service interphone and we can con we can uh, make a conversation with our cabin crew member uh, regarding to our flight passenger address system passenger address system is basically um, the same and um, but uh, we are tra continuously uh, transmitting to cabin uh, when we are making for example in flight announcement to passengers and so on or we are preparing cabin uh, for example uh, if we are departing so uh, we are via passenger address systems we put into the cabin uh, the cabin crew departure position uh, once we are going to land uh, we put the cabin crew uh, landing position okay uh, so that's it uh, there is uh, there is uh, three ways uh, how we can uh, uh, transmit uh, the first way it's uh, here in upper side of the con uh, control column uh, we have a uh, transmitter so that's, that's the one way uh, it's almost using on classics okay because the classics is the only uh, not the only one but uh, it's the uh, it's one of the most common switches which are uh, using uh, during the communications uh, or with the with the air traffic controller but uh, it's a little bit uncomfortable because uh, uh, because of one reason and uh, this reason is uh, that uh, we are uh, making a force uh, into the pilot flying okay so um, it's uh, it's it's uncomfortable com completely that's why on ng we have another option mic over here and this we are mostly use you can use as well uh, the switch uh, which is RT uh, and that means uh, radio telephonic uh, transmitting okay and we have also intercom intercom is via this way or we can 
press it but on the lower side on, of the control column uh, but in Boeing 737 it's so silent cockpit that we, we are not using intercom I have never used intercom in Boeing 737 uh, if you have the a recirculation fan into off position it's completely silent uh, you can uh, you can hear everything uh, without any further problems but if you have a uh, uh, recirculation fan on uh, the cabin it's uh, quite noisy but it's still uh, not the reason to use the inter the flight intercom switches because we don't need it uh, believe me we don't need it uh, this switch okay and now we are going to these knobs okay uh, always you are receiving and transmitting uh, the messages when uh, one of these switch is active okay uh, I will show you one example uh, for example uh, I will put flight intercom and now we are performing the pushback okay the first officer is always connected uh, with uh, uh, with the ground ATC services and the captain is always connected to the uh, to the ground personnel via fl flight intercom uh, but if the captain uh, would like to uh, receive as well the messages uh, which uh, uh, are going from VHF number one so we put the VHF number one this knob and he is transmitting and receiving the messages uh, with the ground personnel but he is receiving the messages as well uh, with VHF number uh, uh, number one uh, most of the situation we have configuration like this one so that means that uh, once we are on the air uh, uh, we are uh, transmitting on VHF number one and we are receiving uh, the emergency broadcast services on one to one decimal five right over here and now we have now one now two ADF one ADF two and so on and so on and so on uh, when we are using it uh, we are using uh, uh, this transmitting for example uh, if you are independent parallel approaches like for example Paris early uh, so uh, it's good to know uh, in okay you check with your charts okay the frequency it's okay the crosses are okay in in it uh, in it initialization page uh, you can see the frequency and crosses are okay but you have to al always uh, identify with the morse code uh, the ILS frequency okay uh, if there is some malfunction ILS you don't hear the most frequency uh, that's why uh, uh, the most of the companies have the procedure uh, that uh, prior to catch the uh, localizer um, uh, they press this button and just confirm the Morse code of the ILS and confirm that ILS it's really working and uh, we can, can we can proceed okay so this is for navigation radios uh, receiving Morse code okay and now we are going to this panel this panel it's very crucial when you are making a pre-flight procedure why uh, as I said before, this is for uh, radio telephonic communications between you and ATC. Uh, this is for intercom. We are not using it. Uh, what is important? Uh, if you have the decompression, okay, so uh, you have problems, uh, you need to put squeeze uh, this, inflate the masks, uh, and uh, once you have the mask uh, uh, on your head. Uh, if you don't press the mask switch uh, like now uh, you are no longer uh, uh, let's say uh, making conversation with your uh, co-pilot or making conversation between first officer and and captain uh, via intercom uh, because you are on boom okay so that means that you are on headset if you put it on mask uh, so you can transmit uh, via the lower switch and uh, it will uh, and uh, you will hear each other that's why it's very important when you have rapid decompression first of all put your mask 
and establish crew communication and what does it mean establish crew communications to put the mask uh, right over here okay and once you have established the communications you are uh, ensure that if you have in mask position uh, that means that uh, you can uh, transmit and receiving the message with your ATC traffic controller as well uh, now I will obey this switch. Uh, this switch it's uh, a little bit uh, not unuseful, but uh, for um, some of you maybe it's useful. Uh, it's clearly stated um, in technical book that uh, it only receives when it is on voice. It always receives only the NAV ADF voice audio. Uh, in both um, we can receive. Uh, Mm, now ADF voice and uh, and the uh, signals which are uh, 1020 Hertz uh, and so on and so on it's quite bit complicated but we'll leave it uh, in in uh, in uh, in both position okay so uh, this is voice this is both and this is the range okay uh, I will show you the picture right above and now uh, we have uh, for example the speaker okay when we are using the speaker uh, the speaker is very simple uh, imagine that you are flying to Canary Island from from example in the middle of the Europe it's always uh, five hours or six hours of flight okay and uh, if there is no busy on the frequency you can uh, put your headset, headset off uh, make it uh, like on speakers okay and uh, if, if somebody from ATC controllers uh, contact you uh, you hear him and you can um, uh, put the headset on and you can answer without any further problems because to have uh, the headset uh, on your ears uh, within six hours of flight it's really annoying and most of most of the flights and most of the pilots are not using uh, the headsets. Uh, you'll just put it on the speakers, and uh, uh, in some kinds, uh, sometimes uh, when uh, traffic controllers want something, uh, so they can uh, easily switch uh, into uh, into communication via headset. Uh, okay, so this this is the speaker. Okay and um, the speaker is as well interconnected uh, with your uh, ground panel and uh, now what I am going to alternate and normal switch uh, what does it mean uh, very simple and very briefly uh, uh, if you have some problems with uh, with radio for example you have some failure or something like it uh, mm, uh, the alternate normal switch uh, has the de degraded mode so that means that uh, for example your passenger address system is not working okay uh, your flight in the phone is not working uh, so uh, there can be a bunch of things uh, which are are not um, of um, not available for you in uh, in degrade mode so that means that um, uh, for example mm, I don't know which one but uh, as I said before uh, this is this is the alternate mode so it's it's working uh, in in some uh, it lose some performance so that means that uh, you cannot uh, receive the via passenger address or, or flight intercom but um, it is uh, when you have some problems uh, some failures with the radio and so on and so on um, now uh, if the observer would like to uh, tell something or uh, communicate as well uh, he have the he has the VHF3 uh, mic panel mic selector panel uh, right over here and uh, he can he can as well receive the messages uh, like you can see uh, here okay and uh, he can make an PA as well and so on and so on but the uh, observers uh, only uh, um, uh, if you're taking uh, for example your friend uh, with the flight uh, 
uh, you keep him uh, for example VHF number one uh, just to uh, hear your communication uh, with the ATC uh, but uh, if there is a light training captain and so on so we can easily uh, adjust or, or let's say uh, communicate uh, for you uh, if you are not well experienced so for example with the ATC or something like that so, so uh, so basically that's it and uh, the last things uh, which I would like to point out is this service intraphone switch uh, with it within, within preliminary procedure we always leave the service interphone into off position why uh, we leave it into off position uh, because uh, if you have in on position all your external jacks uh, which are which you should connect uh, the airplane from the outside uh, are now active so that means that you, you are completely out of any any communications and all the jacks are active so that means that uh, it should be always uh, within preliminary procedure into off position in order to get rid uh, of unpleasant situation when you would like to for example tune the uh, 80s frequency or, or or delivery frequency and it doesn't work yes because you have service interphone on so when you have service interphone off uh, you can make it wi without mm, the easiest way okay so um, and uh, now we are going to some unusual situation uh, for example uh, one of my friends has the problem uh, when departing from Paris early airport and he has stuck the mic I always tell to the pilots uh, learn as much as possible from QRH uh, no matter if it is uh, memory items or not memory items uh, because uh, you can easily solve the situation without the QRH okay so you, are, you have mandatory uh, or let's say it is mandatory to open the QRH and go step by step by uh, but uh, if you are aware of the situation you can solve the situation uh, very soon and with the QRH you just um, uh, you just confirm uh, your action okay so for example imagine that you are uh, departing from Paris and you are continuously tra transmitting that means that your radio will stuck and uh, the most common reasons when the radio is stuck is VHF number one okay because it's it's uh, 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 it's using uh, most of the time and how we can get rid of the situation uh, we can uh, put it into flight intercom and uh, uh, once we have uh, once we are, once, once we are confirmed that uh, um, and there is no continuous uh, let's say transmission into the frequency we know that VHF number one is broken uh, if it is not true okay so uh, we have for example VHF number two like this one so we put to flight intercom and we will see if the problem is right over there uh, it's really rare, rare and uh, and really occasional uh, if wage of number three has stuck okay so uh, maybe this is the reason I will I'll show you the QRH picture right now so uh, this was all about uh, uh, all about the explanation of VHF, uh, VHF panel and uh, VHF uh, how we are using it and uh, what is the correct procedure. I hope you liked the video and see you next time soon and have a safe flight. Uh, bye bye.